uh, Mrs. Shanti Kumari, ma'am, to please come and address the gathering. Uh, before I uh, get into the subject, there are two quick points I would like to share. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Pasha Patelji, for the extremely inspiring uh, speech. Uh, I am tempted to share uh, some of our experiences in the state. Uh, though we have a small uh, area under bamboo, uh, in addition to bamboo, there is a massive uh, greening initiative going on in the state. Uh, in the last eight years, due to our consistent uh, efforts of uh, plant uh, taking up plantations inside and outside the forest, uh, in a big way, uh, we adopt a, a very integrated approach, not just to planting, but protection, maintenance, monitoring, so evaluation, so on and so forth. Uh, you will uh, rarely find any road in Telangana, which is without uh, uh, at least a single line of uh, plantation. And wherever possible, there are multiple rows of plantations. And inside the forest also, we have taken up massive block plantations, so much so that, that uh, the recently published Forest Survey of India report, India State of Forests, it acknowledged that there is an increase of 6.8% of forest cover in Telangana in the last eight years. Uh, this program is named Telangana Kuhartaharam. It uh, roughly translates, some of you who are not familiar with Telugu, that it is uh, a, a green necklace for the state of Telangana. So I am tempted to share uh, that, you know, given his passion that he promised to send uh, even courier uh, uh, plant material to anybody. Uh, the Telangana state government also provides a plant material to anybody uh, free of cost if they are willing to take up uh, plantation. And uh, second point is uh, I have learned a lot, uh, you know, given uh, this invitation to this uh, bamboo uh, national conference, a lot about uh, the bamboo and its plantation, uh, plus and minus, forward, backward, linkages, so on and so forth. So at a personal level, this bamboo is my favorite plant purely because of its beauty. I am always mesmerized by the beauty and the speed with which it grows. You can almost see it uh, growing and in no time it uh, you know, grows uh, three, three story, four story, so on and so forth. So we also have a small initiative of, in addition to taking up this plantation in block, uh, in block plantations, uh, all along the peripheries and uh, inspection paths in the forest, we, we have taken up a massive drive of uh, planting bamboo saplings. Now, coming back to the subject of this uh, national conference, I think the, the question more or less is, how do we convert this uh, poor man's timber into green gold? So we all are aware, especially you are uh, so much more aware, so I won't go into the details of uh, what worked, what did not work. In spite of uh, having such a head start in terms of familiarity of this plant in the local area and congenial uh, climatic conditions, and the traditional knowledge in terms of converting the bamboo and, and putting it to use in a variety of ways in our day-to-day -day life. While the world and other countries have surged way ahead, we in a way got left behind. Uh, in spite of uh, you know, the, the, the resource being at our disposal uh, for thousands of years. So it always boils down now that it, it, this is an age of uh, modernity and it always boils down to how much money it can fetch. So I think we have, in a way, not been able to convert our knowledge and resource base into what can bring remunerative uh, income to farmers. So naturally, if something doesn't bring money, it doesn't really uh, take off. It just remains at, uh, in one corner. Anyway, we are all very familiar with all these uh, issues. Uh, I would like to share uh, some of my experiences in uh, the rural development sector with which I am associated for almost three decades. Uh, th there are n number of attempts as to how we can uh, develop these micro enterprises you know, at individual level, at family level or at group level. A whole lot of uh, experimentation has taken place and, a and massive programs have been launched. Uh, but most of these programs also, as we all know, suffer from uh, you know, certain, uh, 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 certain issues in terms of not being able to industrialize a particular activity in a big way. The big factor is how do we aggregate and create a scale and bring a lot of technology and make it globally a competitive uh, enterprise. Without these elements now in the era of globalization, if we think of just micro enterprises, they are very vulnerable. They are not only vulnerable from the policy environment point of view, they are also vulnerable to a whole lot of economic uh, issues. Now, you compare it with uh, what happens in China. I happened to visit this Guangzhou province, and we walked through the furniture market. 
it feels as if there is no beginning and no end to that market. Kilometers together of shops and so much of produce on display. I was wondering how do they sell, how did they make first and how do they sell? How do they sell? You see any city now, even a middle class family, they just uh, open the online portal and then they select a product, they place order on a Chinese company. And if the order is small, big or medium, it just doesn't matter. If the order is small, then the entrepreneur there makes sure that the order is aggregated with a whole lot of other orders by region or by city or by area. And then they take, you just have to place the order. They take the entire responsibility of packing, uh, you know, shipping and door delivery. So that is the scale uh, that we are, uh, that is required today, you know, to, to survive. So if we are not thinking big in terms of all aspects that are required to put such a global chain in place, we really don't stand any chance. So I would say that to go the China way, we are lucky because China has already laid the road right, as to what components of the ecosystem have to be put in place. So I think it, there is a formula already available and it's just that we have to be strong enough and pragmatic enough to put that in place. So I think if government can play the role of a catalyst, see no sector, no industrial activity can be driven by the government. It has to be driven by the private sector. And only when private sector gets involved in a big way, it can happen. But what government can do, it can be a very good facilitator. It can be a very good catalyst in terms of initial investment in developing good varieties, providing right financial products for the farmers and entrepreneurs. So I, I would like to once again share how the, the SAG, SAG loan product that is released by RBI, where instead of an individual um, loanee, a group is recognized as, as an individual and a product is developed without collateral uh, and the loan can be given to SHGs. So that product, that financial product has transformed the way the women access uh, the formal sector lending, how they access bank loans. At some point, I remember in our state alone, 10,000 crore rupees accessed by the SHG women from the bank. So these catalytic roles can be played by the government in all crucial areas, be it technology, be it finances, be it development of market. And once we create big money in it, automatically private entrepreneurs get attracted. And this should ultimately, or this would ultimately result in a very good gate price for the farmer, which will be a very big uh, positive reinforcing uh, force in the entire uh, value chain activity. If farmers get good money, then more and more farmers get into it and then they automatically go for better varieties, better management, intensive cultivation. Our low productivity will automatically jump to very high productivity and then the products also get developed. So I do hope something like that happens. Now the first uh, uh, bamboo mission started many years back. Now the revamped bamboo mission. I hope we'll look at these uh, essential uh, uh, elements that are missing in the ecosystem. Uh, and I would like to personally thank all of you for sharing your uh, uh, views as well as your products, which are very exciting. Uh, and uh, beyond my imagination, some of them definitely we did not see. We are all the time used to these, uh, uh, you know, the lampshades, so on and so forth. But the dresses, I mean, the clothing material that is prepared and then the uh, garments are uh, really interesting. Uh, I would also uh, request NIRD that it is, a, it is an institution which is eminently placed not just for building capacities and uh, you know, conducting these workshops. You can perhaps think of creating a platform, a regular platform to enable interaction between all stakeholders, uh, not just the cultivators, but you know, there are so many interesting things that are shared here. Producing ethanol from bamboo is also something I don't think many of us would have imagined some time back. So if this uh, permanent platform is created, perhaps this platform also can uh, act as a positive uh, uh, pressure to make sure that the complete ecosystem is created in a time-bound manner. And India also will be, you know, to begin with on par with China and other countries that we named, and hopefully very soon, just as the IT sector and IT manpower or IT brain uh, is leading, uh, India is the lead uh, country, uh, in the globe. One day the bamboo also should become something like that. So I wish all of you the very best and thank you for making me a part of this. Thank you.